Well, good afternoon, everyone. Um, it's lovely to see you all here. And uh, if you don't know who I am, I'm Mark, the Families and Youth Minister. Uh, a very warm welcome if this is the first time to Terrington Church. And um, this is our family carol and crib service. So um, that's why you're here. We're going to be filling our um, stable scene there. Um, so just a kind of a, a notice, a, f a couple of notices. Everything that you need should appear on the screen. So you shouldn't need any bits of paper or anything like that. And um, so songs and readings are on the screen. And we're going to be obviously putting the crib characters in, in there throughout the service. And just to make parents aware, there is a YouTube live stream uh, running just now. So hi, everyone on YouTube. Um, it's not a particularly clear camera, so it's not particularly detailed. So if you don't want your child appearing on a YouTube live stream, then um, please don't come to the, f uh, to the front. That would be uh, great. But hopefully, you will come to the front. Um, good. Well, we're going to have some songs, we're going to have some Bible readings, and we're going to put our characters uh, in, in position. So let's start off uh, our time with O Come All Ye Faithful. Let's stand. Please sit down. And now uh, we're going to have our first reading. And Andrew, is Andrew here? Here he is. Andrew's going to come and bring our first reading to us. Thanks, Andrew. The readings from Luke 2, verse 1 to 7. About that time, Emperor Augustus gave the orders for the names of all the people to be listed in record books. These first records were made when Quirinius was governor of Syria. Everyone had to go to their own hometown to be listed, so Joseph had to leave Nazareth in Galilee and go to Bethlehem in Judea. Long ago, Bethlehem had been King David's hometown, and Joseph went there because he was from David's family. 
Mary was engaged to Joseph and travelled with him to Bethlehem. She was soon going to have a baby, and while they were there, she gave birth to her firstborn son. She dressed him in baby, baby clothes and laid him on a bed of hay, because there was no room for them in the inn. Thanks, Andrew. That's great. Now, in the past, there's been several ways of selecting who's going to come up and put our characters in. But this year, we're going to uh, do a bit of a pass the parcel. But it's not quite past the parcel. So you're going to pass parcels around, but they're kind of lucky dip boxes, okay? So they've got a hole in the top. So I'm going to play some loud music. You're going to, my lovely assistants at the back are going to start you off, okay? They're going to give three parcels to pass around, okay? And this is to get the first set of our characters, right? Now, in some of the boxes, there aren't any characters. There's just sweets and chocolates. So, sorry, yeah, you know. So when the, the parcel stops at you, you're allowed to take one item out, whether it's a sweet or a chocolate, or whether it's one of our characters. Now, just a health and safety note on the sweets and chocolates. We have removed the nutty ones as far as we are aware, but there is obviously a sort of nut allergy risk, you know, so just beware of that. Um, and um, if you pull out a nativity character and you're an adult, then maybe please find a, a child nearby to pass it to. And then once you pull your nativity character out, then you feel free to start unwrapping your nativity character, and then we'll come and put them in once the parcel's been round, okay? So we're looking for four things. Are we ready? Are we ready to pass? Yeah? And just, just pass it along your row, you know, just keep, keep it moving. Um, if you get to the end, maybe get up and send it somewhere else or pass it back. We're passing it forwards this time, okay? Everyone ready? Stand by. Sorry, everyone, the musical director turned me off. <laughs> Here we go. Oh, pull something out. Where is it? Where are they? That's it. Once you've got it, then we'll keep going. That's it. Grab a sweet or a character. Don't take too long about it, though. Now, I think that should be four, yeah? So, we should have four people with four characters, yeah? If you've got a character, unwrap it and make your way to the front, okay? Or send a child that wants to have a go, yeah? I'm just putting this uh, camera here.
Right, thank you, everyone. D hands up if you got a sweet or a chocolate in that round. No? No one got any sweets or chocolates? Huh. Oh, well, a few people. Right, well, you'll have another chance uh, in a bit. Okay, but we're going to sing again. Uh, we're going to sing, It Was On A Starry Night. Let's stand and sing. Please sit down, that's great. And now Helen is going to come and read our second reading. Thanks, Helen. The second reading's from Luke chapter 2, verses 8 to 20. That night in the fields near Bethlehem, some shepherds were guarding their sheep. All at once, an angel came down to them for the Lord, and the brightness of the Lord's glory flashed around them. The shepherds were frightened. But the angel said, Don't be afraid. I have good news for you, which will make everyone happy. This very day in David's hometown, a saviour was born for you. He is Christ the Lord. You will know who he is, because you will find him dressed in baby clothes and lying on a bed of hay. Suddenly, many other angels came down from heaven and joined in praising God. They said, praise God in heaven. Peace on earth to everyone who pleases God. After the angels had left and gone back to heaven, the shepherds said to each other, let's go to Bethlehem and see what the Lord has told us about. They hurried off and found Mary and Joseph, and they saw the baby lying on a bed of hay. When the shepherds saw Jesus, they told their, his parents what the angel had said about him. Everyone listened and was surprised, but Mary kept thinking about all this and wondering what it meant. 
as the shepherds returned to their sheep, they were praising God and saying wonderful things about him. Everything they had seen and heard was just as the angel had said. Thanks, Helen. Right, well, we're going to uh, have our lucky dip session two to get the next uh, lot of characters out. So is everyone ready? I think we're going to go from the front this time. Ready? That's it, pass it along. Don't hold on to it for too long now. Oh. That's it. Pull one item out. There we go. Ready? How many's that I've done now? Two. Thank you. Okay. We should have three people with some characters, yeah? And we should have some people with sweets and chocolate. So, but you don't get to come out the front. So if you have a character, then uh, please come on down. The price is right. There we go. Have we got a sheep? Has anyone got a sheep or anything like that? Oh, cool. Well done. That one of the shepherds, is, he's got a bit of a damaged foot. So he's kind of propped up at the back. Brilliant. Thank you very much. Well done. You want to come around here? That's it. Well done, thank you very much. Okay, well done everyone. And we're going to sing again. Uh, See him lying on a bed of straw. Let's stand and sing.
please sit down. And now Ken is going to come and read our third reading. Thanks very much, Ken. The third reading is from Matthew, chapter 2, verses 1 to 12. When Jesus was born in the village of Bethlehem in Judea, Herod was king. During this time, some wise men from the east came to Jerusalem and said, Where is the child born to be king of the Jews? We saw his star in the east and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard about this, he was worried. And so was everyone else in Jerusalem. Herod brought together the chief priests and the teachers of the law of Moses and asked them, where will the Messiah be born? They told him he would be born in Bethlehem, just as the prophet wrote. Bethlehem, in the land of Judea, you are very important among the towns of Judea. From your town will come a leader who will be like a shepherd for my people, Israel. Herod secretly called in the wise men and asked them when they had first seen the star. He told them, go to Bethlehem and search carefully for the child. As soon as you find him, let me know. I also want to go and worship him. The wise men listened to what the king said and then left. And the star they had seen in the east went on ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. They were thrilled and excited to see the star. When the men went into the house and saw the child with Mary, his mother, they knelt down and worshipped him. They took out their gifts of gold, frankincense and myrrh and gave them to him. Later they were warned in a dream not to return to Herod and they went back home by another road. Thanks very much, Ken. Now, we're ready for our third round of Lucky Dip past the parcel, yeah? Yeah? Okay. We're there, yeah? And let's go. Pull those sweets out, pull that character out. Just trying to work out how many opportunities you've had to grab a chocolate or a sweet. Quite a few. I hope there's, you know, not many of you sort of holding on for too long. Some of the grown-ups are, yeah. Now that should be the last one, I think. Okay, so if you've got uh, a character, then do come uh, 
come down the front. Get those characters unwrapped and come and put it into position. Oh, we've got a, a shepherd. One of the other shepherds has fallen over. The shepherds aren't doing too well today. There we go. That's the sheep. Right, who have you got? Oh, you've got a camel. Nice one. Do you want to put him in? Brilliant. Thank you very much. We'll just move him slightly there. Oh, well done. Do you want to put him? Yeah, good. Well done. <gasps> well done. Oh, well, yeah, anywhere, really. Yeah, pop him here. There we go. <gasps> well done. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Okay. So, have you got... <laughs> We're all... I think that's... I think that's it, isn't it? I think that's it. Good. Well, it's, I'm sorry that the light's not very good on this, but um, does that make it better? That's a bit better. So thank you, everyone, who's unwrapped a, a character and helped build our nativity scene. Now, we're going to sing again. Uh, we are going to sing O Little Town of Bethlehem. Let's stand and sing. Please sit down. Well, does anyone like receiving gifts, I wonder? Hands up. Do you like receiving gifts? Yeah? 
Who likes giving gifts? Yeah, more people like giving gifts. But a lot of us like receiving gifts as well, don't we? Um, what would an amazing gift be um, that you, what would you think would be an amazing gift to receive? Hands up. Any amazing gifts? Let's see. Let's have some ideas. An amazing gift, your idea of amazing gift? Yeah. LOL dolls. LOL dolls. Thank you. <laughs> I don't know much about LOL dolls. I know more about Hasbro, Nerf, and Xshot, but LOL dolls, I'm aware that they exist. A T-Rex. A T-Rex? Well, that sounds fun. That does sound like an amazing gift. A bike. Thank you. A bike. Any adults got any amazing gift ideas? No? There's a few hands up. Just not where I am. Here we are. What were you going to say? No? OK. There was a hand up over here. Yeah, what was your amazing gift idea? A remote-controlled car. Yes. They are very cool. I've got a few of those. Um, of the same ones, try and race them together. It's good fun. Now, there is a gift so amazing, more amazing than all other gifts, and many of us today completely miss it. Yeah? There's a gift, there's a gift more amazing than any other gift, and most of us completely miss it. It's right under our noses. It happens every year, but we completely pass it, it passes us by. The Bible says that the greatest gift is Jesus Christ. He's God's gift to all people, but most just totally unaware. And we may miss this gift because we think it all belongs in the past, a long time ago. We may think it's not for us because we live so far away from where it all happened. But it would be really sad if we missed the greatest gift. In our first Bible reading, we read about Jesus being born. We might miss the greatest gift here, a record of a baby being born. That happens all the time, doesn't it? What could a baby being born 2,000 years ago in a far-off land have anything to do with me or you, you may think. But as we read more, we see that this baby was super important. After all, what birth is announced by angels? These days, people announce the birth of a baby on Facebook or other social media platforms, don't they? We use all these things to communicate. Or they may call people. They may text people. They may even still have it printed in a newspaper. Ooh, that's very 80s, 90s, isn't it? But Jesus' birth was announced to some shepherds by angels. Remember what the angel said to the shepherds? Don't be afraid. I have good news for you, which will make everyone happy. This very day in King David's hometown, a Savior was born to you. He is Christ the Lord. So if Jesus' birth was announced by angels, this is a question for you, where do you think he came from? If Jesus' birth was announced by angels, where do you think Jesus came from? It's not a trick. It's, it's a fairly straightforward question. God? Yeah? Yes? Samuel? Heaven. 
Thank you, Samuel. Heaven. Angels are from heaven, aren't they? So this is a big deal. This is a big deal. Heaven reaches across all nations. It doesn't matter what nation we're from, where we live, because heaven spans every nation, doesn't it? Because heaven's really special and important, and it spans all time. Heaven is relevant 2,000 years ago, and heaven is relevant today. Heaven stays the same. It doesn't go away. So this baby was for everyone, and He is Lord and Savior. Jesus is God. Come down to save us, the angel said to the shepherds. That's, that's big, isn't it? So every Christmas, many of us miss all this. Every Christmas, we have a present sitting right under our noses. It's there every year. It's Jesus, God's Son, come to be our Savior. People miss the fact that this is God's Son and that He came to bring us back to God by living and dying in our place on the cross. That's why I've got a cross shape here. Jesus bridges the gap between us and God. That's me, and that's you, and that's everyone that's ever lived, and everyone who ever will live. Jesus is the one that bridges the gap between us and God. And we need to accept the gift by believing in Jesus. Now, our final reading can help us with this. The three magi, or the three wise men, in a far-off land, looked for Jesus and bowed before Him as King when they found Him. And perhaps this Christmas time, we can follow their example and look for Jesus too, to find out more about what He did and what His death on the cross means for us. This church, Terrington St. Clement Parish Church, is a place that you, you can do that, yeah? You can find out more about Jesus here as we look at the Bible together. So you are very, very welcome to come to our Sunday services And we're also starting a monthly term time, Food for Thought. There's some cards in your pews which should have information about Food for Thought. And also note that we're running a Hope Explored course, three video-based sessions on finding out more about Jesus. Why did He come? Why is He massively relevant to me? So let's not miss the greatest gift this Christmas. I'm going to pray now, and if you want to make my prayer your prayer, then please join in at the the end by saying amen. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for sending the Lord Jesus to us. Thank you that by Him being our representative, we can be part of your family forever. Amen. Thank you that you announced his birth to the shepherds, humble men who many who would have overlooked, but you told them about their Savior before anyone. Thank you, Father, that all people today can find out about Jesus by chatting with your people and hearing from the Bible. Amen. And thank you, Father, that Jesus really is the greatest gift to all of us, for He brings eternal life with you. Thank you that we receive this gift by believing in Jesus and all that He did. Help us to believe in Jesus 
And if we still have questions, to help us to find out more. Amen. Amen. Well, we're going to sing our final carol. Hark the herald angels sing. Let's stand. Please sit down. Well, it's been great to have you all. Um, please do stay and chat. Um, we've got refreshments now, so stay and have a, a drink and some, some of those refreshments. Uh, we will be having uh, an 11.30 midnight communion service here later on today. And we've also got our 10 a.m. all-age celebration with communion tomorrow morning. So you're very welcome to either of those. Let's just close our time together with a prayer. Father in heaven, we thank you for our time together. We thank you for sending the Lord Jesus. And we pray, Father, for all families represented here that you would give them a very happy and a very peaceful Christmas. To the only God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, power, and authority through Jesus Christ our Lord before all ages, now and forevermore. Amen.